So now we've been through the examination in detail, what I'd like to demonstrate is how I would expect um, a fifth year medical student to examine a patient in the exam and I think it, uh, it's vitally important that the examinations are involved, the examiners are involved in this so you need to be talking all the time and explaining what you're doing. So now we're going to assume that uh, I'm taking my uh, fifth year examination um, and uh, Sarah is our patient and I will run through um, what I think you need to be talking about and certainly looking for. Hello, my name's Edward Davis. Hi, um, I'm Sarah. Is it okay if we examine your hip, uh, yes. Sarah? And which is the painful hip? The left one. Okay, and you must tell me if you get pain at any point through this test so we can stop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've seen that you, you've not got any walking aids with you today. You're not, you don't use a stick or anything no. like that. Okay, could I ask you to stand up first, please, um, and uh, come and stay here. So watching Sarah standing, um, she doesn't appear to be any obvious pain. She's obviously not brought any walking aids with us. And she appears to rise very easily out of the chair without any obvious pain. I'm starting off by just having a quick look for any scars or sinuses. And I can't see any scars on the lateral aspect of either hip, which is where I'd normally expect scars to be from total hip replacement. I can see no obvious skin changes uh, on, on the lower legs. So I wonder if we could ask you to walk for us now, please, Sarah. So watching Sarah walk, I'm looking for an antalgic gait, which I'd be looking for the pain expression on her face and protecting that limb. I'm looking for a positive trend element gait, and the other gaits that would be particularly looking for would be a short leg gait, or we'd be looking for a foot drop. If you'd like to come on back and just stand there for us, that's lovely. So she appears to have a, a normal gait. Um, now I'd like to do Trendenenberg's test. So and now I'm going to feel um, to see how the muscles work on your hip, but it involves you standing on one leg. Um, do you think you're going to be able to do that? Yeah. Okay, so I'd like you to stand on one leg in a very special way. Don't do anything yet, but when I ask you to, I'd just like to take your foot backwards like so to stand on one leg. Uh, what I certainly don't want you to do is lift the leg right up, okay? Mm -hmm. So just taking the foot backwards, okay? Now I'm going to have a gentle feel for your waist, um, and then I'd like you to hover your hands above my arms. The reason for that is I'd rather you didn't grab hold of me, but I certainly don't want you to fall over, so I'd like you to put your hands on my arms if you feel unsteady at any point, mm -hmm. okay? So I'm just going to have a gentle feel for your waist now, okay? If it's sore, you let me know. So I'm feeling for the left anterior superior spine, which I've identified, and then I'm feeling for the right superior spine, which again I've identified. Could you pop your hands just hovering them over my arms? Now, I'd like you to stand on your right or, or, or your good leg. Could you do that for me? That's good. So she doesn't appear to be any pain. I'm looking for my thumb position, and they appear to be parallel with the floor, indicating that her right abductors are intact. That's great, pop your foot down. So from that part of the test, I've demonstrated that the, uh, the hip abductors on the right hip are normal. Um, to get the full impression of that, we probably need her to stand on the hip for about 30 seconds to a minute. Um, now we're going to get you to stand on your left or symptomatic hip. So could you do that for me? That's lovely. So again, looking at her face, and she doesn't appear to be in pain, she's certainly not grabbing onto my arms. And again, my thumbs appear to be parallel with the floor. That's great, if you pop your foot down for me. That's good, thank you. Could I ask you to come over to the couch, please? And again, watching the patient moving onto the uh, bed, she doesn't appear to be any pain um, and, uh, and does that without any obvious difficulty. Now, is that comfortable for you or would you like me to rest the bed up a little bit? I'm fine, thank you. Good. So again, looking um, for, for, for any scars, again, carefully looking over the lateral aspects of both hips um, and I can't see any obvious scars there. And looking in the groin area here for any scars, I certainly can't see any anterior approaches to the hip. I can't see any scars from from osteotomies or anything that may have done around the hip. Certainly can't see any areas of erythema and I can't see any obvious sinuses. Looking at the lower legs, I can't see any evidence of ulceration. I can't see any obvious ischemia around the toes, which may be a problem if we're thinking about joint arthroplasty. So I'm just gonna have a little feel for, for the pain. Is there anywhere that particularly hurts that you don't want me to press? No. Okay, so we'll start with your good hip. I'm just gonna feel gently for, for your greater canter or the bit of bone from your hip joint and that's not tender there. No. I'm just gently going to press in the front of your hip. I can't feel any masses there and there certainly doesn't appear to be any tenderness looking closely at her face. Just going to gently feel over this hip. You must tell me if it's sore. So there's no tenderness over the greater trochanter at all. And that's comfortable. Yes. And feeling in the anterior part of the hip. Again, she doesn't appear to be any obvious pain. And I can't feel any evidence of any masses or hernias. At this point, I'm just going to quickly feel for the foot pulses. And she certainly does have a dorsalis pulled dorsalis pedis pulse on the right and there's one present on the left. There's a posterior tibial on the right and a good posterior tibial on the left. At this point I'm going to assess for leg lengths. Um, I'm just gently going to feel again for the anterior superior spine. Is that sore at all? Is that okay? So I'm just going to measure your leg lengths now. Pressing tape measure there 
Again, looking at her face to make sure I'm not hurting her. So I'm measuring to the medial malleolus and her true leg length appears to be 92 centimetres on the right. Looking at her face again, and she doesn't appear to be any pain. Measuring it on the left side, and again, medial malleolus is at 92 centimetres. So she does not appear to have a leg length discrepancy. So I'm going to look for movement now, um, and uh, I'd like you to tell me if you get any pain on either side. First of all, I'm just going to slide my hand under the lower part of your back, if that's all right. Is that okay? Yeah. Now, I'd like you to try and crush my hand by pushing it hard onto the couch. Is that comfortable? Yes. Yeah. Now, I wonder if you could bring this leg up, bringing the knee up towards your chest for me, as far as you can without it hurting. Is that all right? Yeah. Good. So I'm looking that she's got full flexion of her right hip, but I'm also coming down to the level of the couch and I'm looking at the left hip for fixed flexion deformity. And she has no fixed flexion deformity of the left hip because my hand is nicely flattened uh, to abolish her lumbar lordosis. And pop this leg down for me. Now, could I ask you to bend this up until it starts hurting for me? OK, and she appears to have full flexion of the left hip. And again, coming down and looking at the right hip, I can also say that, uh, that she does not have a fixed flexion deformity of the right hip. OK, may I have my hand back? Thank you. So looking um, for internal and external rotation, um, can we bend this leg up for me again? That's lovely. I'm just going to gently move it. Looking at the patient's face, she doesn't appear to be any pain. And that's maximum internal rotation and maximum external rotation, which again appears to be pain-free. So I can also look at that in neutral position, internal rotation and external rotation, which doesn't appear to be painful. Now, if you look at the left side, could you bend that left leg up again for me like you did? That's lovely. I'm just going to stop you there. And again, we're gently going to look for external rotation and we're gently going to look for internal rotation. And we know that internal rotation is the first movement to go with arthritis of the hip and that appears to be normal and uh, the patient's not in pain. So can we pop that down? I'm just going to gently fill that again. Again, internal rotation appears to be normal without the patient being in pain and external rotation appears to be normal. Now, I'm just going to feel for the movement of your leg, but that involves me putting my hands on, on your pelvis again. Is that all right? So again, I'm feeling for the anterior superior spine. And then I'm just taking the leg out into abduction, looking at the patient's face. And at that point, I can feel the pelvis start to move. So that's the maximum abduction, bringing the leg over. And I can feel that that's her maximum adduction in the left hip. I'm just going to do the same thing on this side. If it's sore, let me know. And I can feel the pelvis start to move at that point. So that's maximum abduction and maximum adduction. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is just check the feeling of your legs, if that's all right. So you feel me touching this leg, yeah. and that feels the same as that leg? Yeah. Does it feel the same on both sides down here? Yeah. Feel the same on both sides around the foot? Yeah. Feel the same both sides here? Yeah. Could you pull your toes back up towards your face and keep them there, don't let me pull them down? That's good. And then push down on my hands. That's lovely. So it's a very quick screening um, for neurological compromise. She appears to have normal sensation to light touch. She has normal power, five out of five, um, in the ankle, in dorsiflexion, also in plantar flexion. Great, could I ask you to sit on the edge of the bed facing towards that way? Thank you. Do you have any pain in your back? No. Okay, so I'm gently gonna do a quick screening uh, test of pain for the lumbar spine, but also the sacroiliac joints. So I'm just looking at the patient's face, and is that sore at all? No. Feeling down the midpoint of your back, that's not sore and then feeling on the sides over the facet joints and doesn't appear to be any tenderness. Okay, and then just feeling over the sacroiliac joints, that's not painful, is it? No. Okay, lovely, thank you very much.